so in the last class we discussed about um, certain introductory questions relating to federalism uh, what is federalism what's a federation what is a confederation we discussed all introductory uh, concepts there so we have some more uh, important uh, such topics to discuss uh, but as i told you guys the other day i have already shared the reading with you so today we are going to discuss about the uh, different advantages and disadvantages of federalism and the next and then the next topic would be certain uh, definitions and then nature of federalism so before we go there let's start with certain uh, advantages and disadvantages of federalism so yes uh, um now the thing is uh, before we discuss about uh, all these uh, advantages one thing that you guys need to keep in mind that uh, these do not necessarily have to be the case with all different you know federations in some in some maybe these are the advantages or disadvantages that are applicable in certain others that may not be the case so don't think of it uh, as as if you know if there is a federation then these have to be the advantages or these have to be the disadvantages not necessarily the case apart from that there could be certain other you know mechanisms uh, put in place to for example uh, deal with certain possible you know disadvantages that may arise anyway with that in mind let's start uh, today's discussion so let's start with some of the advantages uh, of uh, federalism so there's a reason for which uh, federalism exists or federal forms of government exist okay the first and most important uh, reason for that is uh, the sheer size and scale uh, of of a particular nation uh, state okay if it is uh, if it is uh, very big like that of india or the united states of america um geographically or otherwise population wise or um, then uh, then uh, it becomes necessary that you know uh, a federal form of government is uh, in is put in place uh, the reason is that um, there's a underlying reason behind federalism okay although um, we do not explicitly say that but it is that federalism and democracy go together okay so um, what does democracy essentially mean that it's uh, essentially ruled by the people uh, but then what happens is that uh, if if you're living in a tiny tiny uh, village community or you know, little more than, little bigger than that like smaller nations it's quite possible for people to directly participate in the political process now think of uh, ancient uh, greek city states like in athens uh, uh, so in those tiny little city states it must have been possible for people to directly participate in the political uh, political process so um, as of today in smaller nations like you know new zealand or switzerland etc etc even the switzerland is a case of federalism federal form of government uh, people do get to participate in those countries uh, in the political process much more actively uh, but then as you know even in those countries direct participation quite often is not possible so they also have representative uh, forms of government but then even representative forms of government uh, if it is too centralized uh, there might be certain problems so if it gets bigger than that for for example for a country of the kind of sheer size and scale you know that india has um a centralized uh, form of government without uh, representation in the states uh, will create certain problems especially in terms of democracy because there will be only few representatives who will be representing 1.3 billion people in the parliament so quite often what happens that a disconnect starts between uh, uh the center and the distant you know uh, places where people stay uh so 
it is because of this uh, because of this reason that you need uh, you know look uh, you know government at the local or provincial level okay so there is a direct relation between uh, how representative forms of you know go government started uh, with that of emergence of uh, federalism so what happens is in case of federalism is that that representation happens at local or provincial level so yes uh, scale okay in the sheer size quite often makes it necessary that for the sake of democracy for the sake of making it more participative you know democracy that you need federal form of government so yes there are two different reasons there could be okay that one is the sheer geographical you know size okay as the distance from the center where uh, one is people are being ruled uh, from uh, from the people themselves uh, become you know bigger and bigger distant and distant okay as the number of people grow it becomes more difficult for these people's voices to be heard from the center so you need governance at their local level and hence uh, the necessity of federalism so federalism essentially enhances strengthens democracy so there is nothing so even when you want unity in a nation i think that unity is only bolstered bolstered uh, enhanced by uh, federalism rather than the idea that you know federalism you know quite often might uh, bring about uh, differences among people that's not necessarily the case okay quite contrary might be the case that you forcefully try to unite people and try to rule them from a center then there are chances that people will feel alienated so yes uh, if, if you do not have such devolution of power then there are more ch chances that only some some elites okay uh, start dominating the entire political process and eventually they don't get to connect with the local needs local aspirations uh and what you know priorities of the people and eventually you know that leads to discontentment among the people and then eventually the entire system fails hence to resolve this problem you know federalism could be of great help so yes uh, so scale and uh, uh size definitely can be um, can be a problem and that can be redressed uh, by federalism uh, which enhances democracy so and then uh, another very important uh, aspect is that for a country like india or other similar countries you see that uh, forget about the entire uh, you know country you move from one district to another the dialect changes you move from uh, one region to another the food habit changes the language changes okay people's practice culture changes and of course there is huge diversity in religious beliefs as well so um, quite often what happens is that in a, in a, in a country as huge as india it is possible that there is a dominant group be it uh, you know religious or be it linguistic or be it other cultural you know practices in terms of cultural practices there might be dominant groups and then definitely there are other uh, smaller groups okay so quite often what happens is that because the dominant group possess all the power they might have this tendency okay uh, of ignoring the uh, you know the cultural ethnic linguistic minorities or their aspirations or about their distinct identity and cultural practices okay so to avoid that to avoid that uh, to avoid such domination and to avoid you know uh, such uh, forceful assimilation and all that you know um, federalism could be of help okay so it could guarantee a good deal of autonomy to such groups okay at the local level okay so even though they might be the minority in terms of all this you know criteria at the national level but at the local level at the provincial or regional level they might might be able to represent rep, represent themselves at the local um, you know institution uh, so yes federalism uh, is definitely you know as i said definitely enhances uh, you know democracy and one of the ways democracy is enhanced is also by 
keeping in uh, mind the concerns of the minorities. So uh, federalism protects minorities. And uh, this has, a, I mean, if it is respected, if it is like, you know, unlike what happened in Kashmir, okay. So, so if it is respected, if it is based on mutual consensus, then it, it, it can definitely prevent conflict, okay. And increase legitimacy of uh, different democratic institutions and of course, it has the uh, it has the great potential of uh, reducing uh, demands for secession. So it, you will see that I had told you guys earlier that um, in certain countries like uh, Spain, okay, um, quite often the demands for secession has been reduced by giving more and more autonomy to this local uh, to their different you know uh, provinces by giving autonomy to the people of these provinces. So forceful assimilation quite often is uh, problematic. So federal, federalism could come at, come to rescue. In India itself, you guys have heard quite often that the dominant national party uh, at the center uh, talks about um, uh, one uh, national language, Hindi as being national language. Then you also hear about resistance to that essentially from the uh, Tamilian, okay. So, so here's the thing. So forceful uh, imposition could have a harmful effect on the unity of the nation. So in such case, giving recognition to the local, you know, uh, sentiments of the people, uh, be it in terms of their religion, language, or whatever it is, uh, only enhances uh, uh, the chances of survival of a nation. So yes, federalism do not so far, be, as we are discussing uh, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, different advantages of federalism. So we can say that this this is definitely an advantage. So yes, uh, but then there are certain limits here though when it comes to uh, this aspect that we are discussing, and that is that uh, that devolution of power of the sort that we just discussed. I mean, through uh, federalism, is possible only when those population, in in terms of the diversities that we have just discussed, are concentrated in certain parts of the you know uh, territory. So if they're like dispersed throughout the um, throughout the you know territory, then uh, such uh, autonomy based on all these identities becomes all the more difficult. So then you have to come up with alternatives, okay? So anyway, uh, now, as we had discussed earlier, so such federations can come into existence in two different ways, okay? Those two different ways are, one is coming together and the other one is holding together. Now, what does these two terms mean? Coming together essentially means that separate sovereign nations, okay? It's possible that separate smaller sovereign nations, okay? They come together and converge into a federal form, uh, a federal uh, form of government, okay? Converge into a federation, okay? So that's one of the ways that, you know, federations uh, come into existence. Another way that it can happen is uh, that there must there, uh, there is a unit uh, a unitary state, and for certain reasons, it could be many. It could be, for example, um, diversity of population one, or it could be inefficiency in administration for whatever reason, uh, um, or maybe for demands of cessation from a particular you know, part that more and more powers are devolved to the localities, okay? So in such case, you become a federation from a unit and in the other separate units come together and form a federation. So one of the examples of, uh, 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 you know, separate units coming together and forming federation is of that of uh, United States of America. So United States of America, under their Articles of Confederation uh, until 1789, you know that whatever it was, it was uh, of, of the sort that we just discussed, the coming together uh, 
sort of federation however the subsequently so it was essentially confederation because it was known as articles of confederation so it was a loose conglomeration but subsequently they formed into a uh, more perfect uh, you know union of the states so since then uh, they have become of, you know what we know today as a federal form of government but still it is coming together because separate states came together and rest of this originally they were only 13 states and then more and more states came together so yes definitely uh, united states constitution is of the first kind that is uh, coming together so why do they form uh, so they might have certain common you know challenges that they come across okay so for example in the case of united states they were fighting a common uh, imperial enemy so yes it could be for those reasons for for example mutual defense foreign affairs you know matters uh, like that okay in those international matters maybe it's necessary for them to come together and then work together so in such case you know, what you see is the coming together uh, federation uh, yes uh, so as of uh, as of now what is the status of uh, united states uh, so earlier even though the states came together separately and formed uh, a loose conglomeration the new united states under the 1789 uh, constitution is of different kind because now they are deriving their powers okay uh, yes uh, although the states have come together but now the constitution starts with we the people so it's essentially representing the voices of the people so as of now it's much more uh, you know united than how what it was earlier but then the process has been the same that different units came together and then formed the um, federal form of uh, federal form of government in united states of america uh so yes uh, what happened subsequently as you know even though there were initially more tendencies towards you know more powers uh, being given to the uh, uh, states at the local level but with uh, judicial interpretation of the constitution and then the supremacy clause of uh, article 6 uh, of the us constitution they have increasingly become more and more centralized Uh, unlike what uh, how the uh, constitution was conceptualized earlier so yes uh, this is um, this is what uh, essentially coming together federalism is but in all other cases uh, those are essentially holding together so for example canada india could be examples of uh, holding together because they come as a uh, unit and then eventually they um, you know distribute powers at the local level so as you know in case of india only a simple majority is required in creating new states or changing boundary of those states so you can definitely say that it is a case of holding together uh, so yes uh, uh, that's again another uh, um, you know advantage of uh, federalism apart from that there are many other uh, uh, specific uh, advantages of federalism as is discussed in the reading i have sent what are those that federalism uh, i mean federalism could enhance or, or could, could enhance or put, uh, protect pluralism uh, i shouldn't use the word enhance okay federalism definitely protects pluralism okay uh, and then federalism is also rooted in the idea of constitutionalism now um, what essentially is constitutionalism so uh, I, i would say that let's say that it's essentially about uh, um, protecting the rights of individuals okay as against the state that there is a certain boundary that the state will not uh, you know uh, uh, cross okay so that's lakshman rekha that the state not supposed to cross okay so your individual liberties are to be protected your other rights are to be protected so essentially derived from this lockean idea um that we can in lockean idea of uh, you know social con- contract that we had discussed earlier from that we can derive the idea of constitutionalism that a government is limited by the law okay 
So yes, uh, so federalism, uh, federal form of government could basically be rooted in constitutionalism. Now, why would that be? That's essentially because, you know, in uh, when we talk about uh, earlier, I said that federalism is also related to republicanism. Okay, uh, so why why did I relate with that? The reason is essentially that in uh, in all these forms of government, the power is not concentrated at one uh, in one hand. Because if there is too much power concentrated in one hand, then there are high chances of the same, you know, getting corrupted. They they might start ignoring, for example, uh, the conventions uh, that you uh, which are uh, constitutional conventions, which are of high importance because those are not laid down anywhere. They might, they might, through their sheer brute, you know, majoritarian power, start imposing their will on others. Okay, so it becomes quite autocratic. So, as you know, because in federal form of government, the power is distributed between the center and the state. So that could play a great role in limiting the powers of the government. So one acts as a check on the other. So it's not just the horizontal division of power, but also that vertical division of power could uh, come to rescue um, uh, certain, you know, ideals cherished in the Constitution. So more, more essentially uh, could protect individual liberties and rights. At the same time, uh, federal uh, form of government also protects pluralism. Uh, and how does it do that? Because uh, uh, too much concentration of power in one hand uh, could lead to forceful homogenization, homogenization, which is not good for a country. Uh, uh, so, but in federal form of government, there's a high, there's a higher chance that diversity, be it as we discussed, cultural, religious, or other of other sort, is respected. So, a quotation had been has been given in the reading that I had shared, where it says that. So uh, according to Filipov and uh, Shvetsova, successful federalism requires all of its benefits, well-functioning democratic institutions, judicial system, integrated uh, national political parties, and appropriate electoral incentives created by democratic political competition. So here's the most important part. The basic finding of the literature is that only in well-functioning democracies can federalism be stable and effective form of government. And conversely, outside of democratic context, federalism is ultimately an unstable form of government, which legally progress either to territorial disintegration or to becoming mere constitutional formality. So yes, uh, they are essentially talking about the same idea that we discussed earlier, the relation between federalism and democracy. So federalism is only possible in a democracy because democracy is all about increasing representation of the people through different means, okay? So if there is no respect for democracy, if there is no respect for diversity, if there is no respect for opposing views, okay? If there is sheer imposition of the dominant view on others, okay, then federalism will not work. Uh, so that's quite against the ideas of democracy. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, so that's another important, uh, you know, advantage. So federalism definitely, federal federalism definitely protects constitutionalism. Okay, constitutionalism, by that as I said, is the idea of limited government. Okay, and secondly, uh, federalism uh, increases uh, or protects pluralism. Uh, another important uh, advantage of federalism, as has been discussed, is that federalism uh, increases uh, power sharing. Okay, so how does that happen? So, in, as you know, there is a high chance that. Uh, if it is a unitary form of government, then one particular dominant part, you know, political party could possibly, you know, because it commands the respect of or um, uh, opinion of uh, the majority of the people in a community, so it it could become very dominant, you know, um, in a political factor in a country. So at the same time, it could ignore certain other uh, other views. Okay. Uh, so 
what happens is that so in a federal form of government so even if one dominant party is uh, in power at the center some other local interest okay other local parties for example so in india here we have for example agp here uh, so similarly you have samajwadi parties etc etc so some of the parties um so there are many local parties at the local level you have tmc and then you have dmk whatever you have many such parties okay which uh, and those who those who are members of those parties cannot dream of probably um, you know directly being the dominant political force at the national level but they can definitely claim some political power at the local level so that's how some power sharing is possible between the dominant forces on the one hand and the uh, other smaller forces at the local level so federalism allows political groups uh, that are minorities okay the smaller groups or minorities on the federal or national level uh, to hold office at the state or provincial level so these in these uh, in a political parties which hold power at the state level they may not be able to in a gain political power at the center but they can definitely gain power at the level of the state okay so this is uh, another very important aspect of uh, federalism now why is that important because quite often uh, you know if uh, no power sharing happens then people might get a uh, little discontented by that and then that leads to demands for secession so you have seen this in our own country apart from that uh, it could also increase representation of uh, other um, uh, of other ethnic minorities okay uh, and because you are devolving more and more power to the local level so usually what happens there is that at the central level the elites are in power political elites who usually have money and political clout etc have power but as more and more powers are devolved towards the state or other uh, or provinces then poor people and other marginalized groups women can also participate in the political power so they can also hope to be elected to different offices and from there from those offices they can eventually hope that they will ultimately reach the uh, uh, top so that is possible in federal form of government otherwise it is difficult it is very difficult only elites will have a uh, hold elites and those who with money and other political clout will be have will be able to have you know a hold over power uh, apart from that another important advantage that has been identified is uh, innovative and pragmatic approaches to policy development okay so what happens is that uh, quite often you want to innovate in terms of policy but if it is a huge country uh, there is a high chance that if that policy fails then it will have severe effect in terms of uh, you know money or in terms of many other factors okay so it is quite it is better that such innovation experimentation happen at the local level so for example i heard uh, we heard about uh, this experimentation that Uh, uh there was a small town in which the local government i think some some town in europe okay uh, where they uh, were trying to experiment that um, they they wanted to remove they removed all the traffic signs okay all the traffic lights and then wanted to see whether the traffic flow becomes more efficient there now think of this as a innovation you know uh, that you know being you know, you know experimented somewhere directly implementing something of that sort at the national national level might if it fails might cost you a lot okay so in such case it's better that such experimentation happens at the local level now um, for example uh, let's talk about uh, allowing euthanasia okay so will that be good or bad okay so it's better that it is experimented at the local level if the outcome is good that it is not exploited then you can replicate that at the national level the quite often there are concerns about cost whether implementation of a particular policy at the local level okay um, 
uh, at the central level could uh, cost severely okay so in such case what you can do is experiment that at the state level okay if it is successful there then you can replicate that at the national level so in this reading that i had given you one example given is that 2006 example of the us state of massachusetts you know uh, that was able to establish quasi public health insurance system that greatly expanded access to medical care for low income citizens so you know such a program would have uh, uh, you know some uh, effect on the economy okay so in such case instead of directly taking the risk it's better to experiment at the local level and if it is successful then you can replicate at the central level okay so that's another advantage that it provides you know, provide you that you can without fear of extraordinary cost or loss or harm uh, experiment something some policy at the local level and if it is successful then you can then replicate and implement at the national level then another very important advantage is that uh, as you know that uh, if it if the administration is only centralized it will be very difficult for them to administer at distant provinces distant regions okay so there there will be huge burden on the authorities you know at the center so federalism basically reduces the same okay now ser service delivery becomes more efficient because that happens at the local level okay that's something that is employed in almost every institution um, even in universities you have you, not everything happens from the you know office of the vice chancellor or of that of the register more and more powers are uh, uh, devolved into different departments okay why is that for efficiency in administration for efficiency in service delivery so the same can be said of a federal form of government so if it is a huge territory like in india then it's better that uh, burden on the central authorities uh, reduced okay so yes uh, only those matters which are of national importance that cannot be you know delegated to these local authorities will be dealt with by the central authorities so they can focus on what truly matters at the national level and uh, then uh, delegate the other functions uh, to the local level so yes there's another uh, advantage uh, one more advantage is uh, that resources are shared across geographical you know space okay uh, what happens is that uh, it says that federalism is a way of ensuring the wider distribution of public resources through revenue sharing and other forms of fiscal arrangement okay that guarantee agreed shared of resources share of resources to all areas of a country so what happens essentially is that uh, it is quite possible that um, if it is not a federal form of government okay then there may not be this idea of equality in terms of state okay so in a, in in an over centralized in a state there's high possibility that more investment happens at one locality okay or more uh, you know generation of products happen at one locality okay or it could be that one particular geographical you know location is blessed with more resources okay in such case you will see an a form a kind of inequality within the state okay so in a federal form of government because you know, there is this idea of uh, approximate equality among the states so um, those who are in need could be helped by those who are blessed with more resources okay so that is something that that is possible you know Uh, a federal form of government but if a huge territory is completely centralized then this would be the problem you know that might arise so yes uh, that's another uh, important uh, uh, you know advantage so it has been said that federalism may also encourage more geographically diverse economic social you know development in contrast to a unitary where everything money power culture gravitates to the capital so yes uh, what i was trying to tell you that there is high chances of you know power capital um, or things other things you know gravitating towards the center or where there are more resources but in other lesser fortunate areas they're left with nothing but 
if you have this idea of federalism, then there is this idea of approximately, approximate equality among the regions, and that uh, maintains some kind of socioeconomic equality among the states and ultimately among the people as well. So yes, another impo important advantage. Then uh, the last uh, advantage uh, that has been discussed is that of uh, capacities and democratic responsibilities, okay. So what is that? Uh, it, this is something that we discussed earlier that, you know, people from localities have aspirations of uh, uh, being at the top, okay, uh, at the top of the political uh, order, okay. But jumping directly from you know the ground to the top might be very difficult. So uh, at the provincial level, at the state level, you know you are provided a uh, platform for training, okay, uh, for both politicians as well as for other administrative officials, public officials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then from there you can ultimately climb up to the top. So definitely at the provincial level. Um, uh, you know, training ground is provided in case of federalism. So that's another important uh, advantage of uh, federal form of government. Now, uh, let's proceed to some, you know, possible disadvantages as well. Okay, so what are those? The first one that's discussed is um, a lack of coherence and duplication of work. Okay, and what does that mean? That the same so in the absence of proper distribution, so that's the condition that I would like to add. In the absence of proper uh, demarcation of legislative as well as uh, administrative function, there is a possibility that there is functional uh, or power overlap between the center and, and the state, okay? If that happens, then the same thing happens uh, at both level and that leads to uh, overlapping, okay, and contradictory policies. But then, as you know, in in, in our case in India, um, Article 246 talks about uh, and, uh, in the seventh schedule you have three different lists, okay, uh, and um, the subsequent provisions uh, also lay down how to interpret those provisions and what happens if there is a conflict, okay. So if so in the absence of all those uh, clear demarcations, okay, uh, it is quite possible that two government exercise power in the same space, leading to contradictory policies and conflicts. Okay, so that's going to be difficult. Okay, if there are comp competing laws and policies, okay, to an ordinary citizen it becomes confusing as to what to do and what not to do. So, uh, so this this could be a disadvantage. But as I said earlier, these disadvantages this could also be avoided by proper constitutional enumeration of powers and functions. So what could be the case? So it says that as a consequence, the responsibility of each government for policy outcomes and service delivery, delivery may be hindered by actions or inactions at the other level. So what happens if in the absence of proper enumeration and delimitation is that you know, no one really takes uh, responsibility? That okay, you expect the other, uh, other uh, you know, government to work. But if there are uh, proper enumeration, then of course the responsibility is also properly delegated. Uh, and, um, then in such case, the uh, you know, conflict does not arise. So yes, that's one of the disadvantages is that could be overcome as well through proper constitutional mechanisms. The second one uh, that was that has been identified is uh, operating cost. Okay, because you will. Uh, in a federal form of government have administration and others, other stuff. The, govern, the entire government set up at multiple levels, so obviously it increases expense, okay? Uh, so because you have to pay more salaries to more staff here and there, so it increases cost, okay? However, this is not necessarily the case, okay? If there is no proper administration, the cost could arise in other towns, okay? so. It is not necessary that having you know, administration in multiple level would necessarily increase, increase for cost. It definitely increases cost in the sense that if you have officials at what le one level, then of course less salaries to be paid, less people are to be employed. And if you had more people at different level, then of course more salaries, allowances, and more cost likely, likewise. But then doing so, you might avoid other costs. 
you know, arising from inefficiencies, okay? So not necessarily, but definitely could possibly be one of the, you know, criticisms of a federal form of government. Then thirdly, uh, it says that there is a possibility that it increases regional discrepancies of wealth, resources, and uh, outcome, okay? So then again, as I said, okay, this, this, this is only, this happens in the absence of proper constitutional mechanism, okay, put in place that allows uh, approximately equal sharing of revenue and something that you see in India already exists, okay. So even then there are some inequalities, for example, states like Bihar and UP consistently perform, you know, poorly. Uh, compared to many other states like um, Maharashtra, Karnataka, etc., etc., uh, in other terms as well. Um, uh, but then, uh, if there is proper mechanism for, you know, revenue sharing, uh, then of course the same could be reduced. However, that is not necessarily the case. Okay, it depends on many other factors. Okay, now. Um, Bigger states with higher population with lack, um, lack of access to, access to resources uh, now might find it difficult, okay, uh, to uh, economically advance, whereas uh, other states uh, which are uh, gifted with uh, resources or um, they have um, uh, smaller population, maybe they have better administration, then they might improve uh, economically or may, maybe they have access to the sea and many other geographical factors, okay, that could help uh, help them in uh, improving their economy. In such case, um, in such case, okay, so this is what has been said that in a federal form of government, in the absence of the mechanism, there might be inequality, okay, uh, that might arise. But if there is a proper mechanism for uh, you know revenue sharing, so for that you, you have to look at the fiscal relation, okay, that will tell you whether this in fact is the case or not. But even then there are limits, even when the fiscal provisions are put in place that you know, revenue will be shared uh, as per the needs of okay, socialism at the state level, as I had said earlier. Okay, in, in even in those cases, there are chances that, you know, because of this uh, kind of forced uh, sharing of revenue, there might be demands of, uh, in extreme cases, even cessation, okay? When one particular territory generates uh, most of the, you know, e e you know e e economy, um, e revenue, or I mean, the GDP, okay? In such case, if they are also compelled to pay the others, okay, who are not performing well, then, then there are chances that, that there are demands of, you know, cessation. So that could be the case of, uh, in that sense of constitutional mechanism, that could be considered as one of the disadvantages that federal form of government possesses. And this you might see in your own life, okay. Mm, so yes, uh, apart from that, uh, there's another another problem that is identified is harmful economic condition, okay, uh, uh, competition between different uh, national subunits, okay, subnational units, okay. Now what does that mean? So there is this idea, uh, concept of race to the bottom. Okay, what happens is that if uh, different states are competing with, uh, you know, one another, for example, in terms of uh, uh, increasing, getting more investment, so what they could possibly do in order to attract investment, etc., the capital movement, they might compromise in terms of, for example, labor legislation, in terms of human rights law, okay? Then what happens that they race to the bottom, okay? So they, in the name of free market, free trade, okay, capital movement, they compromise in terms of the uh, rights of uh, the laborers, for example, or human rights generally, okay? So that is not a good outcome, okay? So in the absence of proper regulation, okay, this could be another disadvantage. In fact, this had happened in the United States. So after that, they came up with this idea of, uh, cooperative federalism rather than competitive federalism. And that also led to 
having some uniform you know laws at the federal level okay so for example labor laws at the federal level that no states can go below this level okay so something of that sort is necessary okay or human rights protection at the central level that no state in whatsoever cases in the race to draw capital free trade etc um, are able to compromise in terms of human rights so yes uh, in the absence of that this could be another disadvantage of a federal form of government uh, along with that uh, other criticisms have been for, uh, provided like judicialization of politics so that is also a very uh, possible outcome in the sense that because uh, in a, in a, a non federal setup uh, such disputes might be resolved through a political process but in a federal setup uh judiciary plays a great role okay and disputes uh, quite often are resolved by the judiciary in indian india's case you know interstate rivers uh, disputes are some of the matters in which judiciary uh, has uh, uh, intervened even when the constitutional provisions clearly says that they you know they ought not to so that's uh, one of the outcomes that is possible that most of the uh, most of the you know matters some of the matters which should be democratically resolved okay uh, is at the end of the day uh, is uh, resolved at the judicial level so that's another disadvantage you know, of uh, federal form of government however not necessarily because uh, in some of the legal systems you know people respect judicial opinion more than they respect uh, a political outcome so it it could vary from you know system to system then another uh, uh, criticism is that it could potentially exclude the minorities uh, in the sense that okay someone who might not be minority at the national level but might turn out to be minority at the local level so at the local level discrimination is still possible so in the absence of a mechanism to address that this is another potential you know um, harmful effect of uh, do you call it uh, uh, the federal form of government okay and then another um, criticism is that uh, uh, this has in fact been seen at many different places that uh, the elites at the local level in the absence of uh, uh, you know proper overseeing might misuse their power so quite often uh, devolution of power happens in a federal form in a federal system so that local people are empowered people at the local level are empowered but then you might have you know elites at the local level who might misuse the power so this is not a proper platform to name anyone but anyone with an eye for it okay can clearly identify whether things of that sort happen or not now the thing is how do we redress this this can only be redressed by increasing democracy and not by decreasing it if fearing okay uh, misuse of power of uh, power at the local level by local elites you further centralize then it only worsens the you know case than improving it okay so i think the answer is all the more devolution okay if it is necessary devolve further until the power truly reaches the people so yes uh, there is another uh, possibility that might happen okay but then the answer is not more centralization the answer should be more decentralization so it has been said that the greatest challenge is to ensure that decentralized government is also a decentralized democracy now if if decentralization is the idea so to improve democracy you will not go back on decentralization you will only further decentralize okay so yes there's another problem that might arise so we have two more uh, disadvantages just left uh, one is uh, because at the local level uh, a government might not have the same kind of you know um, uh, resources okay necessary to function adequately uh, or you know human uh, um, resources beat anything it could be technical know how human resources etc etc okay so in such case the local government might find it difficult to govern okay yeah, so that that could be another problem but i don't think that's really a major problem that cannot be you know redressed it can be redressed by 
um, eventually, maybe not at the beginning, but eventually resources can be generated, talents can be harnessed, it can be done, okay? But then sometimes uh, a state might face some problems, especially disconnected, uh, um, you know, uh, re remote states might find some of the problems. But as, you know, connectivity increases, as, you know, um, uh, you know, with the passage of time, as uh, we are more connected in terms of transportation and communication, I think these, these problems can be overcome. And of course, technology plays a great role because most of the laborious human tasks in administration could also be replaced by technology. So that could also come to rescue. So it has been said that constitution makers should be aware of the risk of overburdening weak and newly established governing, governing institutions with demands that they cannot uh, meet to do so, um, would risk disillusionment, distrust, and discontent. So what is being said is that you know, it should not happen in such a way that suddenly there is defunct governance at the local level that leads to disillusionment, distrust, and discontent. So if uh, creation of new states happens, it should be done keeping all these ideas in mind. And lastly, uh, uh, you know, this is, I think, uh, a, a worry you know, many nationalistic governments have that the more devolution there is, the more power uh, diffused at the local level, the more chances that the uh, you know state nation state will for uh, the nation will fall apart. The idea is based on this fear that the more power you give to the uh, regions, the localities, uh, the more they will try to set themselves free from the uh, from the rest. Okay. So recently you heard about this controversy relating to you know Nagas demanding their own. A flag and also the demand for a separate constitution. Uh, so you hear about all these uh, ideas, okay? And the, that leading to the fear that okay, and this there would be a domino effect. You, you know, one state gets it, then another will ask for it, and then eventually it will all fall apart. So that's one of the criticism of federal forms of government, but not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. You have, for example, in the United States. There, there is dual citizenship. There are separate state flags, okay? And the states have their respective constitutions, okay? That didn't lead to uh, the state falling apart, the United States falling apart. They are still quite united as they were. Now, so the, um, uh, so the factor is that uh, devolution of power does not necessarily lead to demands for cessation. Uh, demands for cessation might arise from imposition of one ideology, okay, one political view, okay, imposition of one cultural practice, one way of speaking. So democracy can uh, uh, is a, is a protection against that, okay. But democracy in itself is not a protection in, in that, in the sense that uh, democracy quite often also means that domin dominant you know group get to impose themselves on others, but that's not the idea of democracy I'm talking about. It's the representation of everyone, starting from the individual level uh, to a certain group level and all the way high up. So everyone, every view, every group should get a representation and federalism only helps that and uh, does not go against that. So although this is quite often taken as a criticism. So with that, uh, we would like to end our discussion for today. In the next class, we will discuss about uh, certain specific nature and characteristics of uh, federation and after that we can uh, do some sort of comparative study on you know how you know, you know legislative powers have been uh, legislative executive or financial powers have been uh, divided between the center and the component parts in different uh, you know, countries for example in the United States uh, or Canada or Australia we can take two three examples like that and then we can proceed if time permits. So with that, we conclude our discussion for today. Thank you.